Good afternoon, eighth graders. My name is Mr. P, and today I have a book to read called The House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer. So a bit of backstory is this is about a boy named Mateo Alacran, and he's from a clone. He's a clone from a drug lord named Mateo Alacran. So they both have the same name, but he goes by, the, the drug lord goes by El Patron, and he owns poppy fields, and he owns a country called Opium. So this place is in the United States. It used to be in, it used to be called Mexico. And he was born from a cow. So the DNA got inserted to a cow. And that's how Mattel was born. So he goes by Matt. So let's start the story, shall we? What should I do? What should I do? Whispered Matt, hugging himself, rocking back and forth in the dark passageway. He loved El Patron. He wanted to be with him at the hospital to watch over him and urge him back to hell. But at the same time, Matt remembered Maria and saying that she didn't know the source of El Patron's transplants, and it's evil. Celia would be looking for him, unbidden. Another memory surface. Celia was fussing with the suit Matt has worn to the birthday party long ago. If anything bad happens, she had said, I want you to come straight to me. Come to the pantry behind the kitchen. What do you mean bad? Matt asked her. I can't say. Just promise me, you'll remember. And even longer ago, Tam Lim speaking to him as soon as his rescue from Rosa. I'll tell you this, El Patron has his good side and his bad side. Very dark indeed, like his majesty when he wants to be. When he was young, he had made a choice, like a tree does when it decides to grow one way or the other. He grew large and green until shadow over the whole forest. Most of its branches are twisted. So many hints, so many clues, like a pebble that starts like an avalanche. Matt's fear shook more and more as memories piled up. Why had Tamla given him a chest full of supplies and maps? Why had Maria run from him when they found out McGregor's clone in the hospital? Because she knew, they all knew. Matt's education and accomplishments were sham. It didn't matter how intelligent he was. In the end, the only thing that mattered was how strong his heart was. And yet, Matt wasn't quite sure. What if he was wrong? What if El Patron has really loved him? Matt thought about the old man lying on the hospital bed, waiting for that one person who could bring him a glimpse of his youth. It was true, too cruel. Matt curled up on the floor of the passage. He lay in the welter of fine dust that had drifted him into the dark, secret space over the years. He felt like the inhabitant of an ancient tomb, an Egyptian pharaoh called Chadalin King. El Patron let it talk about such things. The old man enthusiastically described the wealth that has filled the pyramids for his use of the old kings in their afterlife. He liked the tombs of the ancient Chaladins, and even more, not only did they have clothes, food, but the horses were slaughtered to provide transport in the shadowy world of the dead. In one tomb, archaeologists had discovered soldiers, servants, and even dancing girls laid out as though they were sleeping. One girl had been such a hurry. A hurry! A blue ribbon that was meant to be worn in her hair was still rolled up in her pocket. But a fine thing that was, El Patron had told Matt, that king got to rule. In this life, but also had his entire court to serve him in the next. And that was even better than El Dorado, powdered with gold on the balcony of his great house. Matt choked in the dust and sat up to clear his throat. <clears> he <throat> didn't want to make any noise. He didn't want anyone to find him until he decided what to do. He leaned against the wall and the darkness outside, equal by darkness inside his mind. Was he to do? What could he do? Footsteps running up the passage made him jump to his feet. He saw a flashlight bobbing in front of the slight figure. Maria, he whispered. Oh, thanks heavens. I'm afraid you've got, gone somewhere else to hide, she whispered back. Hide? They're looking for you. They're looking for you everywhere. They tore up Cecilia's apartment and they've been going through every room in the house. They sent bodyguards to comb through the stable and fields. Matt held her by the shoulders and looked at her closely. The dim light, her face was wet. Why are they looking for me? 
You have to know. Tam and Emma say you were too clever not to figure it out. Matt felt turned to stone. The bodyguard evidently gave him more credit than he deserved. Matt hadn't figured it out. Not really, up until a few minutes ago. I'm supposed to be throwing a hysterical fit in my room, Emilia said. I'm always hysterical. She says you're the only lady addition to furball. She's wrong. You're not a furball. There's so much, much more. But an early, Matt had been thrilled by Maria's words, but the situation was too dire for happiness. So, as a quick excerpt from chapter 22, and I hope that you guys liked it. And if you want to read more of the book, it's called House of the Scorpion. So thank you, and goodbye, children.